In a radio broadcast from Tokyo, Raj Bihari Bose, one of the founders of the Indian National Army, INA, and the Indian Independence League, proclaimed, This is a salute to him, to whose inspiring call owes the birth of positive Indian nationalism. Sri Aurobindo is the foremost of those seers of Indian nationalism. During his undergraduate days in Presidency College, Calcutta, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose was greatly inspired by Sri Aurobindo. He writes, Aurobindo Ghosh is my spiritual guru. On 30th April 1908 at around 8.30 p.m., there was a loud explosion. Khudiram Bose, along with Prafullo Chaki, attempted to assassinate British magistrate Douglas Kingsford by throwing a bomb on the carriage they suspected Kingsford was in. Khudiram was sentenced to death. It was here at Mukama that Prafullo Chaki fatally shot himself before he could be arrested. But what was the source of the bomb? Parindra Kumar Ghosh, Sri Aurobindo's younger brother, along with Ulhashkar Dattu, Prafullo Kumar Chakraborty, Vibhuti Bhushan Sharkar, and Nolini Kanto Gupta, all revolutionaries were preparing to make a bomb. Now, one afternoon, the five headed to this secluded Digiriya hill to test. And the bomb did burst. But the splinter hit Prafullo Chakraborty, and he died on the spot. Several years later, Charles Taggart, who headed the detective department, confirmed that the mastermind behind the revolutionary movement was Borokorta, chief commander. There are strong reasons to believe that Borokorta was none other than Barindro's Shejda, his elder brother Aurobindo Ghosh. My solitary cell was nine feet long and five feet in width. It had no windows. One plate and bowl used to adorn the courtyard. More dear and useful than the plate was my dear multi-purpose bowl. It helped in the act of ablution. Later, with the same bowl, I gargled, bathed. A little later, took the lentil soup or vegetable soup that was poured into the same container. During rain and thunder, thanks to the violent Thandava Nritya, dance of the strong wind, a small-scale flood would take place inside my little room. Lieutenant Governor of Bengal, Sir Andrew Fraser, wrote to the Governor General of India, Lord Minto, about Sri Aurobindo. He is not quite sane. He is a leader. In this letter, Baron Ghosh writes to the main conspirator of the entire affair, Mr. Aurobindo Ghosh, where he clearly states, Dear brother, now is the time. Please try to make arrangements so that we can all meet at our conference. We must have sweets ready-made for emergency. During his detention in the prison, Aurobindo Ghosh's life underwent a major transformation. For the first time among the thieves, robbers and killers, in human body, I could realize the divine presence. Mm. He has done approval. Fearing for the safety of Narendra Goshain, the prison authorities shifted him to the jail hospital. Kanailal doctor and Shotkendra smuggled him to the doctors. Kanai and Satyan were awarded the death sentence. He was there unexpectedly, a friend of mine, but I did not know he was coming. Srijut Chittaranjan Dash. If to aspire to independence or to preach freedom for one's country is a crime, then I am a criminal and let me be punished. The so-called incriminating letter is a forgery manufactured by the prosecution and the police. And taking all the evidence together, I am of opinion that it falls short of such proof 
as would justify me in finding him guilty of so serious a crime. Sri Aurobindo was released from jail on the 6th of May, 1909. And 24 days after his release, Sri Aurobindo was at Uttarpara. I looked at the prisoners in the jail, the thieves, the murderers, the swindlers, and as I looked at them, I saw Vasudeva. It was Narayana whom I found in these darkened souls and misused bodies. Lord Minto wrote to Lord Morley on the 14th of April, 1910. Lord Morley responded, As to the famous Aurobindo, you are mistaken if you think that there is any sympathy with him at home. That is not the point. The point is, in my mind, the institution of proceedings against him was a foolish blunder from the side of policy. He was not to be found. He just disappeared. I heard the Avesh go to Pondicherry. I could not question. It was Sri Krishna's Avesh. On 15th August 1947, India attained her independence. On its eve, the 14th August, Sri Aurobindo was invited by All India Radio to give a message to the nation. August 15th, 1947 is the birthday of Free India. It marks for her the end of an old era, the beginnings of a new age. But we can also make it by our life and acts as a free nation, an important date in a new age opening for the whole world, for the political, social, cultural, and spiritual future of humanity.